Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we are going to be creating exactly what you see on screen. This is a hipster style clothing tag. So not only could you actually create a clothing tag using these methods, you could also use them for um, maybe household goods, tagging those, or even gift wrap for different holidays throughout the year. So this has a bunch of different uses besides just being a hipster clothing tag. So just keep that in mind. We're going over a bunch of different techniques that you can use to really speed up your workflow from this point forward. So I do have keystrokes turned on. So whenever I'm moving around, you can see everything. So if I don't mention everything, definitely pay attention to the screen because I'll have all the keystrokes there. I am on a Mac, so you'll see this little symbol show up. If you're on a PC, so this is the command symbol on a Mac. If you're on a PC, whenever you see that, just use control instead. This is um, the option key, which is also alt. So if you see that, hit Alt on your computer. Okay, now that that's all taken care of, we're using basically three colors. One is a pattern though. So I'm going to zoom up on the actual color palette here so you can grab these if you wanna follow along exactly. So this is kind of a white. I'm working in CMYK because the, the intent for this would be for printing. So you can see over here the color build for the white. Here's this dark rich blue. So we're going to bring in this paper texture and we're actually going to use it as a pattern. So if I come over here to my swatches palette, you can get to your swatches palette by going window swatches and it'll pop up. I've got this texture right here, which I'm going to get rid of right now. So you can see how this whole thing works. So this is from my 12 recycled paper patterns kit and I'm just gonna go file place and the kit has tileable JPEGs so we're going to bring in one of those tileable JPEGs so since we're working in Sam I'm gonna navigate over here I'm gonna grab grab the craft texture and hit place and that's just gonna pop it in and since this is tileable it's infinitely repeatable so you won't see any of the edges which is really important I have an entire tutorial on converting a Photoshop pattern to an illustrator pattern so I'll leave a link for that in the video description and on screen if if you want to learn more about using your Photoshop patterns in Illustrator. So all I'm going to do here is go object rasterize and this basically just gives me a smaller file size later on because I don't need this pattern to be scaled larger than this so it's okay for me to rasterize it so I'm just going to drag it into my swatches palette release and now I can just delete that and now whenever I draw a shape I can let me just change the color on this so you can see whenever I have a shape I can just click on the swatch and it'll fill it right in with that texture so that's exactly what we need and now that we have the, our texture we can create our base shape for our clothing tag so I want this clothing tag to be a business card size which the typical standard business card size is three and a half inches long by two inches tall. So we're gonna reverse that. We're gonna have two inches wide right here by three and a half inches tall. So we're just gonna use a rectangle. So I'm gonna hit M on my keyboard for the rectangle. Just click once and we're gonna input two inches by three and a half inches and hit okay. All right, now we have our shape right here, but you can see we've got these cool little notches right here. So I'm gonna show you a really fast trick for doing those. So what we're gonna do is just hit M again, and you're just gonna freehand the shape of this rectangle right here. So I'm just gonna make sure that it's smaller than my base rectangle. So that's looking pretty good. And I'm not going to draw it all the way down. That part is important. So next I'm gonna grab the rectangle behind it and just slide it down a little bit. And now you can see I've got from here to here is how extreme my notch is going to be. So I'm just gonna, let's see, I kind of want, that feels good. Kind of a gradual angle right here. I don't want it too harsh. So that's looking good. So the last thing we need to do is make sure that this is exactly centered on top of this rectangle. So you're just gonna select both of these and then come up here and just hit this little icon for horizontal align center. That'll just make sure it's perfectly centered. Then we're gonna come over to our Pathfinder palette over here and you can get to that by going Window Pathfinder. And you're just gonna hit this little icon right here for Unite. So it's gonna merge these two together. So just hit it once and you can see now it's one shape. Next we're going to hit the little hyphen key on our keyboard and that'll bring up your delete anchor point tool and you're just going to click this point and this point and now you got your tag. Piece of cake. Okay so the next thing we need to do actually I kind of want this to be a little more angled so I can do that by hitting my A key for my direct select tool. I'm going to click on this point hold shift click on this point so both of them are selected and then I'm just going to hit my arrow down key and that will make it more extreme if I change my mind uh, later on. Okay 
So now we just need to throw in this little circle right here. So we're gonna grab our ellipse tool and then a nice little trick uh, for making a circle, you can make it like this, just holding shift and dragging it out or you can hold shift and alt and then just click and drag and that'll create uh, a circle from its center. So just create a circle that feels good for you in proportion to everything else. And then you're going to select everything and just make sure everything is aligned. So we're gonna hit this little icon up here again. Now I'm gonna come over here to my Pathfinder palette and I'm just gonna hit this little icon right here for exclude. And as soon as I hit that, it removes that little circle and I'm good to go. Okay, so now we have our circle and our base shape. So now we can start putting everything together. So we're gonna set out our text and our layout and then we'll be all done. So I like starting with my main text first because that's the focal point of the layout. So I'm gonna set this and then everything kind of builds around it so I make sure that that, it, that remains the focus of my layout. So I'm just gonna type out um, whatever name that you'd like to put on your clothing tag. But I'm gonna use this example, Hipsta, because we're making a hipster style clothing tag. So this font that I'm using is called a Hawthorne script and I actually created this font. And the nice thing about it is I have a full regular alphabet and then I also have an alternate alphabet. So you can see the H is different right here. Every single letter comes as a different style so you can mix and match and create different unique outcomes with it. So I'm just gonna highlight my H and then just toggle down right here and choose alternates and now I've got kind of a cool H in there, especially since it begins our word. Okay, so now that we have this, we're gonna eyedropper that white that we're using. So I'm gonna hit I on my keyboard, tap on the white, and now I've got that all set. Okay, so we're looking really good right here. So if you remember the tutorial a few weeks ago, we went over all the best practices for typing along a path in Illustrator, which makes editing later on so much easier than warping. So it's a really good practice to get in the habit of. So we're gonna set this text along a path you can see right here and it's way easier to define exactly where your text, um, where you want it to sit. So we're just gonna grab a an ellipse right here and you're just gonna drag it out however it feels right around your word. So I want a noticeable arc but I don't want it too extreme so that feels pretty good right there and then you're just gonna hit a on your keyboard click on the bottom uh, anchor right there and then just delete that and then I'm gonna hit T on my keyboard drop that right there I'm gonna make sure my text is centered and then over here I'm gonna change the font to railway which is a free font and we're gonna use the light weight of it and I'm just gonna type out the clothing peeps. Okay, so first of all, I need to make sure it's all caps like I have over here. So all you have to do is hit this right here and I'll change everything to all caps, so that's really easy. Uh, we're gonna reduce the size of this slightly down to seven points, and then we're going to separate um, the letters a little further from each other. So universally, that's called tracking. If you change the space between individual letters separate from the whole, that's called kerning. So this is your tracking right here, so we're just gonna set this we're gonna set this one at 100. Okay, so obviously it's bleeding off and we need to make sure that it's fully readable. So you're just gonna hit A on your keyboard and you're gonna hover over the center point right here and just click and drag it over and I'm gonna drag it all the way to the end. And now I know that I'm exactly centered. Okay, so we also need to change the color of this. So I'm gonna hit I on my keyboard, I'm gonna grab this blue, and it's actually looking just a little too big for me. So I'm gonna reduce this down one more point. Actually, I'm gonna go 6.5 here, and that's looking good. So I'm just gonna raise it up a little bit. Okay, so now that we have our little headline right here, now we can move on to our base text right here. So I've got established 1986. So we're just going to drag this over for the sake of time and I will give you the exact settings for that. And it is railway, semi-bold, it's set eight points, 100 point tracking and it's small caps. So just hit this little icon in your character palette. If I had all caps, it would look like that. Small caps looks a little classier and competes much less with my script um, text right here. So I'm just gonna toggle this down a little bit 
give it some breathing space. Okay, so now we need to bring in the stars and we're just gonna grab our star tool over here. And when you drag out a star, this may not be what your star looks like because I adjusted it. Your star probably looks a little more like this. Um, so the way to adjust a star is you can hold um, your different keys down to kind of make it cool. So I'm holding command. You can hold control on a PC and you can make it like really spiky or extra kind of fat. So just find a star that you really like. Um, and you, if you hold um, shift, it'll keep it straight instead of getting all wonky. All right. So I'm just going to keep, actually, I'm just going to bring over my stars from over here so we can save some time. So let me bring that over, bring it down. Okay, so everything's looking really good. We want to make sure that everything is aligned to the tag. So I'm going to um, make sure these are aligned first. So I just have my text and my stars right here. So all I'm going to do is hit this icon right here, horizontal distribute center. And now I know that they're all perfectly spaced. And then I'm going to hit command G or control G on a PC to group them together. And then I'm going to hold shift and select my clothing peeps and my, actually I can select everything. And now I'm just going to select my tag too. So I'm going to click on it one more time. So it's like a double selection. And that means this alignment is based off of where this tag is sitting. So these are going to align to the center of this tag because it's got this double selection. So I'm just going to hit this icon up here, horizontal align center, and now everything is perfectly aligned. All right, so we are almost there. If it gets funky like this, that's just an illustrator glitch. So just zoom in and then zoom back out and you'll be good. Okay, so just don't freak out. It happens with patterns. It's just a weird thing. All right, so now we need to create this dotted line and there's a really handy trick for creating dotted lines. So I am going to make sure I've got my stroke as that white and I'm gonna grab my line tool and I'm gonna hold shift, that way I'm keeping it perfectly straight as I drag it across. And now I've got that white line. I'm gonna come over to my stroke palette. You can get your stroke palette by going window stroke. And I'm gonna keep it at one point. I'm gonna change my cap to a rounded cap, change my corner to a rounded corner. And then I'm gonna select dashed line. So typically you have, um, like this could be two points, three points, and then you can define everything else and then you have a dashed line. If you would like a dotted line, all you have to do is remove the dash. So I'm gonna put in zero right there. And then the gap is how far between each dot, um, how much space is between each dot. So you can have dots that are really far apart or make them really close together. So I'm keeping mine at three points right here. And how big the dots are depends on the weight. So I can make really big dots or really small dots. So I'm gonna keep mine at one point, zero for the dash, three points for the gap. Okay, moving right along. We are almost done. Okay, so I'm just gonna drag all of this text over and I'll give you my settings for that just to save some time. This is just filler text, so not super important. Um, I'm using six points for the text, railway regular, zero for the tracking and that's that's all it is and it's that dark blue that we've been using okay so on to our sizes so what i like to do is i'll grab my lips tool and i will drag out a circle and i'm going to give it a stroke of this white okay and let's see i think i used 0.5 for the point size. So in my stroke palette, I'm just gonna reduce this to 0.5. We're good there. And then once again, I am using um, semi-bold for my letters for the sizes. And let's see what size I'm using. Railway semi-bold, eight point, and I've got it all caps right here just to make sure everything stays as caps. So I'm gonna go extra small, railway semi-bold, eight point, all caps. All right, so I'm gonna drag that in there, kind of center it out, and I'm gonna make this white as well. All right, so I'm gonna group these together, and then I'm going to repeat them. So I need five of these babies. And 
move them up a little bit. I like making sure that this, the edge of this aligns with the edge of my line right here. So I'm gonna turn my rulers on, Command R or Control R on a PC, and I'm just gonna click on my ruler and drag it over. And I'm gonna drag it until I hit the edge of this line, and then I'm gonna do it on the other side too. That way I've, I know that everything is in alignment exactly the way I want it. All right, and that, that one's right on the line. Okay, so now I can select all of these and then I can space them out by hitting this little horizontal distribute center. And now they're all evenly spaced. All we have left to do is fill in the one. Um, so if you hit A on your keyboard and select it and then hit T, you can change um, the words without having to ungroup them. Actually, you can just go right in with your type tool and just type them in. So it's kind of nice, you don't have to ungroup them. All right, so what we want to do is whichever size you want to use, I'm using small, and I'm just going to reverse this. I use my direct select tool so I don't have to ungroup it because it's kind of a pain. And then I can select my S and just hit I on my keyboard and eyedropper this texture. So it just brings that in. And now I'm gonna hit M on my keyboard and just drag out my nice dark rectangle from edge to edge and I'm gonna color that my dark blue and I'm gonna send it all the way to the back so command shift um, open bracket and then I'm just gonna bring it forward okay so we are pretty much done this is the only part that we have left and if you'd like you can even put um, a URL at the bottom so that looks good so the very last thing we need to do is just put in this little extra detail this could be a sticker to just hold that um, the hole punch a little thicker when you have a drawstring through it so I'm just gonna hit M on my keyboard and I'm gonna draw out um, a small little skinny rectangle I think that looks good and I'm gonna select my tag so i'm gonna hold shift select my tag and then i'm gonna select this tag again so all i'm gonna do i'm not holding any keys at all i'm just gonna click on the tag and then i'm going to align it so only this rectangle will move so i don't mess up my alignment of anything else and then i'm going to select both of these come into my pathfinder um, hit divide and now command shift g select that circle and delete and now I can select all of this and send it to the back. And there's our tag. So I can hit command semicolon and that will remove those guides so I can see exactly what it looks like. So that's looking really good. So that's how to create a hipster style clothing tag in Illustrator from scratch. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe. I release a new design tutorial every single Tuesday. And don't forget to head on over to my blog, every-tuesday.com for even more design tutorials and a bunch of design freebies. And also don't forget to check out the video description. I'll have links to that paper texture and both fonts that were used here so you have everything you need to create your own hipster style clothing tag. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next week.